ladies and gentlemen, Joe did this. Please welcome CPAC board member Kevin Hassett and co-host CPAC Now, Mercedes Schlapp. You guys had a wonderful time. Has it been spectacular? I thought day one was fabulous, but day two has been amazing. And wait till day three happens when President Donald Trump brings the house down. Are we excited? So I know there's a lot going on tonight, so I want to make sure we get right to it. And I'm so honored to have a very dear friend of mine, a former White House colleague. I would say probably one of the smartest economic minds in America. Kevin Hassett. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Kevin, the title of this panel is Joe Did That. Wait, but he's not blaming himself for this economy. Is it Joe Biden's fault on where we are right now in terms of the state of our economy? Uh, I'm absolutely going to answer that question, but before I do, I have to say that in the Roosevelt Room in the White House, yes, uh, we always like to sit next to each other on the couch in the back. With Larry this, Kudlow, and, Larry and, Kudlow would be and on. And I was side. always on this side of you too. Yes, Remember? That is and, and so it really right. so so feels. But but I just wanted to say, watching uh, yesterday and today, uh, that Mercy, it's just amazing what you're doing at CPAC. Uh, if you think about all the energy that goes into it, and and guys. And gal, she's doing this with five daughters <laughs> while she's doing this. They're and all so, working. All I'm saying way. is, come on. <laughs> <Thank> <laughs> A mama can do this with five daughters. Yeah. And and the Schlapp girls are working. They're they're helping out wherever they can. So put your kids to work. It's actually a good thing. Build a strong work ethic, okay? And, and, and by the way, a guilty confession, I only did that because now I can say I got a standing ovation at CPAC. <laughs> that was smart, Kevin. You're always outsmarting me. Yeah. No, but let's, yeah, go, let's back go, back. To, go back to the Joe. Did, is it Joe's fault? Is it the Joe Biden's administration fault that the economy is where it is with us, the highest inflation that we've seen in decades? You know, you know, the attribution of, of blame and credit uh, is a really miraculous skill that Democrats have. Uh, and, and it very often eludes reason. And, and so you might recall that for President Obama, uh, the, like his main point was when a businessman was proud of his small business, hey, hey, you didn't build that. Do you remember this? The yes. government built that. You didn't build that. And, and uh, and so now, you know, the government, like this all-powerful thing that even, is even taking over all the small businesses under Obama, it has like no blame whatsoever for what, what's going on. Um, we look at uh, gas prices, for example. Uh, in gas prices, what, what does Joe Biden uh, call uh, what's going on with gas prices? Putin's price hike, right? Putin's price hike. Well, let's think about that. Uh, Joe Biden, when he ran for office, what did he say about what he was going to do to fossil fuels? Right. He said he was going to end them. He said he was going to end fossil fuels. Uh, when he got into the White House, uh, he reestablished something that President Trump did away with, which is this uh, multi-cabinet agency that establishes the social cost of carbon. Okay, and, and then they put out what they thought the social cost of carbon was, which is the cost that accounts for all the global warming and everything. But if you look at that report, it said that the world will be saved, it'll be a better place if the price of oil is $120 a barrel. They put it on paper. Yeah. Okay, and, and so now, what's the price of oil? It's a little less now, but it's basically, we went to 120, mission accomplished Joe, Joe Biden, and, and, and everywhere we look at his policies, you know, he told us what he was gonna do, uh, and then he did it, and then it had the effect that any economist would tell you it's going to have, and then he denies it's his fault. But Joe did that, you know, Joe did, why, why, is, why is it that the oil price is high? He says it's Putin's price hike, but do you know what? Uh, when we left office, uh, or actually right before COVID, uh, we were producing in the US a million barrels a day more uh, oil than we're producing today. Wow. Okay, the price is higher now. Oil producers should be producing more, but they're not because Joe Biden's got them tied in handcuffs. He shut down the pipelines. He's doing everything he can to drive the price up and he's calling it Putin's price hike. You know what, Putin's uh, production, sadly, because the sanctions aren't working, has gone up. And so our production's down a million barrels, their production is up. So whose price hike is it? Well, well, Joe did that. 
Oh. Go do that. So let me ask you here, because I had you on our CPAC Now show, which you can always watch on conservative.org. And we actually, it's a, it's a podcast now, America Uncanceled with Matt and Mercedes Schlapp. Uh, so you can listen to it anytime. But Kevin was on last year, and I remember he made this bold prediction. He's like, we're going to be at 7% when it comes to the inflation rate. And this was by December of 2021. This was several months beforehand. And I was like, really, Kevin, 7%? That sounds crazy. We're at 4%? No way. And he, you were even criticized by Larry Summers and some of these other economists saying, no, we're, we're going to keep the inflation at float. It's not going to get bad. You were right. How did you predict inflation rates were going to go up? You know, I, I'm getting pretty old. Uh, and, I thought you and, were a psychic, but there, that's yeah. a different story. But, but, but I, I am willing to assert that I still have neurons that fire now and then. <laughs> uh, and if you don't, then maybe you end up with policies like Joe Biden. Uh, but anybody who's trained in economics uh, is going to know that, that uh, he, right now we could have a show of hands. So suppose the government prints a whole lot of money and then they mail it in checks to people all around the country. Um, and then they, they attack the guys who make stuff. So they attack suppliers and they, they call them names and they raise their taxes and they launch uh, $200 billion worth of new regulations on supply. So they push supply down, they put demand way up by mailing people checks. What happens to inflation? Right? Is there anyone here who thinks inflation's gonna go down? Of course not. It's a, so honestly, it's not even really economics as common sense. Uh, but they don't have any. And, and now they're getting ready to do it again. They, they're, they're pushing a bill through that raises taxes on corporations and sends money to people. Uh, and it's going to make the thing worse and worse and worse. And so I think inflation's going to be 10%, not 7%. Uh, the 10% Fed's, by when? Oh, oh, two months from now, the year-over-year the -year number will be 10%. Okay, so in two months, you all are going to call me and be like, Kevin Hassett. I was right. Right, once again. But then how do the American people, how are they able to handle this high inflation at 10%? We know that about 67% of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck. How can Americans survive in this economy? They're, they're doing OK right now, uh, but it's, it's, there was a lot of money that was mailed to people uh, in the relief uh, efforts that President Trump supported and also the subsequent uh, Biden relief, which I think was way too large. Uh, but people saved a lot of that. Uh, and that savings is about gone. And, and to put it in perspective, what Joe Biden's done to the economy, the, the typical American family, uh, you know, we, we live in big cities, and so it se might seem impossible to us, but the typical American family, when Joe Biden took office, uh, spent $150 a month on gasoline. $150 a month, that's a lot of money. Right. Uh, today, that same family spends $300 a month on gasoline. So their spend expenditure just on gasoline has gone up by $150. And I can tell you that I've got two big, healthy, healthy boys. Uh, and, and you know, as you can tell, I like to eat myself. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm, a, I'm a hungry person. But we very rarely spend $150 a week on groceries. I guess we eat you know, cheap stuff. When you have but... five kids, you're spending <laughs> a lot more than that. Um, you spend okay. that on milk. I, yeah, I exactly. But, but the point is just that Americans are spending way, way more, but their salaries aren't going up. And so and this is why also in that interview, I said, oh, and, and we're going to have a recession, for sure. And, and the wait, 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 but Biden's saying that we're going to change the definition. I mean, they're basically playing around with this definition of the recession. And these economic advisors, they're on defense. They don't want to even approach this topic of a recession. When is the Biden administration going to acknowledge that we are in a recession? Uh, actually, the, the labor secretary inadvertently did so today. Oh. And, and um, I, I was on Martha's show on Fox at the 3 o'clock hour, and probably they'll be playing a clip asking me to respond to his slip. Uh, but the fact is that they're in denial about it. We are in a recession. Uh, the facts are clear. Uh, let me say it this way. Uh, there are many different ways to say it. Uh, and, and as an economist, I'm, of course, happy to say it every possible way. But I'll, I'll stop with one, uh, which is that in 10 times since World War II, we've had two quarters in a row that had negative growth or more. Um, 10 times. Uh, all 10 of those were in recessions. And so there's never been two negative quarters in a row, going back to World War II, uh, that where we didn't eventually have the referee of recessions call it, call it a recession. This is going to be a recession. It'll have started in December or January. Uh, and they could deny it all they want, um, but I find that appalling. If I were in the White House 
and President Trump said, let's deny this, re this recession, uh, then I would quit. Uh, because people need to know what they're up against. Uh, and I can tell you, and Mercy knows this is true, President Trump would never, ever, ever ask me to lie about the economy. And the proof of that, the proof of that is that he brought me back into the White House when COVID started. And then you might have seen, I was on TV out in front of the White House every day talking about the horrible economy to come because of the shutdowns. And I was the voice of the shutdowns, which made the Washington Post and Tony Fauci hate me because it meant that this, this brut brutalitarian thing they were doing had a cost. But I went out there in March and I said that we were going to have the worst uh, quarter of GDP growth since the Great Depression. Uh, and, it, and the president, from the beginning, was like, Kevin, I want you to be square with people about what the economic effects of these things, what, what they're going to be. And, and, and when I w walked back in after doing that, um, expecting a, a back slap from him, uh, <laughs> uh, he said, OK, OK, OK. I understand, yeah, we got to be square with the people, but, but try not to use the word depression. <laughs> <laughs> He said, you can talk better. about the numbers, Make but... It better. Um, but, you know, you're right about, the, about President Trump. You know, he always wanted us to be direct with the American people and really explain the situation at hand. One of the things I think he was always very proud of is that he was able to build a strong economy. This is in contrast with, you know, Joe Biden. Joe Biden and his team, they call us climate deniers. They are recession deniers is what they are. Yeah. And I think that... You know, the fact is, is for President Trump, his goal was, Kevin, I remember when the job report, num, report the job numbers would come out, and he, and he would want to know, how are they going to be? What does this mean to the American people? It was really, truly one of his biggest achievements. Yeah, it really was. And, and, and to put it in perspective, uh, we went through the COVID thing, and we I went up. It was me and Mnuchin and, and Kudlow, uh, on, you know, on, from the orders of the president. We went up and we talked to Democrats. And we said, this is an emergency unlike anything we've ever seen. And it's stuff, stuff is going to happen that, that we never anticipated because right. it's, everything's changing. And uh, if you saw me on TV, I started using the image, we're trying to build a bridge to the other side, but we're in the fog. And we don't know where the other side is. And that, that's the way I wanted to define the problem. And so we worked with Democrats and President Trump, even after they're impeaching him and everything. Uh, and we said, so what we need to do is we need to have stimulus bills, but we need to do them like every month or two, because we have to wait and see what happens before we know how much more we have to do. And so that year, the COVID year, we did five stimulus bills, all unanimous consent, all bipartisan, all the Republicans and Democrats voted, and they were designed by us to be exactly the right size. And so what that meant was, that we had a V-shaped recovery, and when Joe Biden took office, GDP was growing 6.5%, and inflation was 1.5%. It's one of the great economic accomplishments in economic history, and it's something you're never going to read about in the media, right. but it's something that you've got to remember. And the reason it happened, the reason it happened is that we right-sized it because we waited and we looked and we adjusted and we waited and we looked and we adjusted. So what does Joe Biden do? Joe Biden comes in, and it's like, oh, I control Congress. I'm, I'm the president. Or maybe he doesn't have thoughts like that. Maybe the people, I don't think his he puppet knows masters. He's the president, but that's a different. Yeah, thing. yeah. but 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 he uh, he basically didn't talk to Republicans. Uh, he pushed forward a massive, massive stimulus uh, when the economy was growing six and a half percent. The inflation was one and a half percent, and that obviously was going to do what we all agreed a little while ago uh, is it, it's going to cause inflation to take off. And the problem with inflation taking off, and, and, and this is something really important to say, and it goes back to your talk about like, what ordinary folks going to do, is that everybody's wages usually adjust like in January. You know, you talk to your boss, and then you get your salary for the next year. But prices adjust every day. And so right now, over the last 12 months, the average American has seen the, the value of their take-home pay go down by 5%. Wow. OK, so, so their wages have gone up but half as much as inflation. So when real income drops 5%, what does real production have to do? It has to drop about 5%. Uh, what has real production uh, done? Well, in the first quarter, it dropped like 1.5%. In the second quarter, it dropped like 1.5%. And so the output numbers are doing exactly what common sense would tell you that they should be doing, given that incomes are down by that much too. And so against that backdrop, imagine the 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 intellectual crime of 
denying that we're in recession. He's saying that everything's fine. You know, Joe, Joe Biden will still, like last week he went out and said, you know, I took an economy on the ropes and I turned it around. He, he got the turned around part right. <laughs> he turned it upside but he down. Turned it, <laughs> he turned it upside down. No kidding. And now the wheels are off. Well, I got to ask you, because you're making me really depressed. So let me ask you here. How long will this recession last? Because your predictions have been right, OK? I don't know if you're a psychic or something, or something you're not telling me about. But like, your predictions have been right. How long is this recession going to last? Will the housing market crash? And how can Americans prepare? Right, so, so uh, thing one, how long will the recession last? Uh, if Republicans capture the House and the Senate, then there's going to be a sigh of relief that I believe is large enough to help us leave the recession. Mm. Uh, because right now, like look at this crazy, stupid uh, legislation that they're passing right now, which is you know, th throwing gasoline on the inflation fire and attacking supply by raising taxes on corporations, precisely when we're trying to lure them to produce here. Right. OK, so the point is that markets are terrified that the goons that think up stuff like that get to do that for two more years. And that's why equity markets are, are down so low. They, they're thinking, wow, this could get really, really bad, and it could. But if Re Republicans capture Congress, there's only so much they can do. They'll still be clever with their regulations, and it'll you know, be ugly. But it won't be depression ugly. But I think that I would call for a depression if they capture the, the House and the Senate again. Because then just think what AOC is going to have planned for us. Uh, and, and it's not going to be good. How about the housing market? Uh, the housing market has gone up a lot, and now it's going to go down a lot. Uh, I'm uh, looking, as you know, I'm looking for a place in Florida. Uh, I haven't bought it yet, I, and I'm going to time it, I think, for about a year from now. Oh, <laughs> so, I think that's good advice. Yeah. But you're saying this, which is just alone, when you all go out there and talk to those people that still like the Democrat Party or they're independent voters, and you've got to just say that. If we continue down this path with the Democrats in power, we're going to end up in a depression. Sure. That is the message. So what are your final thoughts as we conclude this wonderful panel? Uh, the, the final thought, though, is that, that when, when I explained it uh, to, to you folks a little bit earlier, I, I looked out through the bright lights, and I saw so many faces nodding. It's so obvious what's wrong right now. And um, one of my favorite shows ever uh, was the show called House. Did you ever watch that show? There's this doctor who solves like these yes. tricky cases, and, and what will happen is at the start of the show, like there'll be like two guys who show up at the hospital. One of them's got like a knife in his chest, and the other one has like a weird rash. <laughs> uh, and, and the person with the knife in the chest is never interesting to House because it's just like sure maybe he's dying, but it's not like a puzzle. But the guy with the rash, you spend the whole show with the guy with the rash. But if you show up with a knife in the chest, it's actually kind of good news if you're on that show because then they pull the knife out, they sew you up, they send you home, they fix it. It's easy to fix. But the guy with the rash, it's hard to fix. We don't know what's wrong with him. And, and so right now, our economy has a, a knife in the chest. It's really easy to fix. If we were in the White House, we'd have this fixed within a few months. Uh, and so therefore, help is on the way. Uh, it's something that we could do. It, it, and it's something that is easy to do because we know exactly what's wrong this time. And so therefore, we know how to fix it. So uh, I should call you like the Dr. Kevin Hassett because you know how to fix this. And I got to say, don't you love this economic lesson that you needed to learn today? From Kevin Hassett, one of the best <laughs> economists in our, in our country. And let me tell you something. He was such an important asset to President Trump and the administration, always a happy warrior, always willing to explain how things worked when it came to the economy. And uh, really such a service that you've done for our nation. Kevin Hassett, thank, thank you so thank much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Marissa. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you.